recording. Uh, welcome everybody. We are in uh, session uh, 14th of the class and uh, actually both 14th and 15th uh, two sessions are completely devoted to test documentation. We will we will be looking at that uh, from uh, two perspectives. So one perspective is uh, purely interview related. So when, when you come to an interview and they ask you such and such question related to uh, test documentation, that is what we say. Another perspective would be um, very much practical. So in case you have to write test cases, how you write test cases. In case you have to uh, do test suite. What is test suite? What is test matrix? Uh, in case they ask you, again, coming back to the interview, they ask you how to write test cases for such and such dialog box. Or in case they ask you how would you test such and such functionality, what should you say? So that is why we have two sessions. And if you look inside of the two sessions, uh, let me go there, it's 14 and 15, we have two surveys. Survey number one and survey number two. Survey number one is for today, and survey number two is for, I believe, tomorrow. Probably, I think, I think we meet tomorrow. And um, so, let's see what we've, what we've done with surveys so far. Uh -huh. We have 16 people completed the surveys, which, which is okay. I, I hope to see, to have more people uh, tomorrow, but uh, we have a couple of resources to be used. So first of all, we have um, on the data, uh, pay, uh, data fold, in the data folder, we have that uh, list of, uh, I can show you here, out of uh, one, two, three, four, five links here with interview questions and answers, the second one um, is about test planning and test documentation. And it comes with quite a few questions here. And I can tell you that um, when it comes to interview questions, uh, maybe 30%, maybe 40% of all the questions they ask are one way or another way related to test documentation. So it, it is a major issue. Nobody will ask you much about how you write bug report. I mean, they might, they might, but um, if you do it for a couple of months, there is no issues left with bug reporting. And you might work for a couple of years and never do test cases or uh, have no idea of how to do good ones. So test documentation, uh, test planning is, is a big, big, big time issue. It's a crucial for getting a job. Okay, that is the resource we are going to use, and um, then we have the forum, uh, the school forum, with um, typical interview questions answered for you here, asked and answered in in a, in a great detail. So we we might use this one, and um, okay, guys, we are ready to go. Let's see what we have in your um, test documentation one quiz. Okay, so what, what is the first question? What is test case? Um, so uh, even though in that specific uh, quiz you do not provide any detail, you just choose one out of a group of question answers, uh, but in reality you would need to come with certain details which are given to you on the forum here. So what is test case? I'm, I'm not going there yet, but uh, you, you have to come in, in a verbal way answering that question, you, you have to come with certain details. So what is that? Step-by-step um, -step instruction on how software feature should be tested. That is bad one. That is a real bad definition. Guys, you shouldn't say that. It is not step-by-step -step instruction. So uh, test case is, is rather a situation, something you plan in the future. Uh, it might come with certain instruction. It might not come with any instruction. So in instruction or step by step uh, doesn't have to be step by step. So it is a situation in which you make sure that the requirement is satisfied. So there is a requirement, you go there and you make sure the requirement is uh, implemented properly. 
So uh, that is the right one. A set of conditions and variables under which tester will determine if requirement upon an application is satisfied. Set of conditions and or variables. Set of conditions and variables. Um, it, it comes with certain um, explanation normally because the definition by itself, it is a very good definition, it is not instrumental though. So we go to um, we go to Notepad. Probably I gave you that example before, but in Notepad we have edit find functionality, which which is implemented with the dialog box, find dialog box. So what happens when I just run the dialog box and there is nothing in the find what um, text field? So then find next button is disabled. That is what Microsoft says. It says if control cannot be used, disable it. Good, but if I type just one letter here, we'll say A, now it is enabled. So we have two test cases here, two. Why two test cases? Because test case might fail or pass in just one place, because test case is about a requirement. One requirement, one test case. So one requirement says if it is empty, the button should be disabled. Another requirement says, if it is not empty, it should be enabled. So we have two requirements here. We have two test cases here. Now, coming to the definition, which says set of conditions and variables. Um, if there is nothing in Notepad, I just run Notepad. I cannot go to Edit Find because it is disabled. I have to type something here first. What is that? It is a condition. Condition number one. Condition number one says um, provide some input. Input to the Notepad window. Uh, Notepad window. Um, the next question is what kind of input? So condition is there should be some input. What kind of input? Then we have variable. One. And that variable is the text you type in. What is the text? I don't know. Um, since uh, we are testing the searching capabilities, definitely there should be some string there, string, which I can use to uh, later on find if the search is working properly or not. So it should be something which has uppercase and lowercase, let's say, port nov, port nov and uh, port nov uppercase and port nov. Guys, never use somebody else's name, okay? Just use yours. People might not like it. So um, uppercase, lowercase, and then you can search forward and you can search backward. Okay, so that is the variable number one. Okay. Then I go and, uh, to the dialog box, I open the dialog box, and then in the first test case, which says no text, the button, find next button is disabled. The condition is, condition is, the, the button is disabled. Uh, case one. In case one, we have another condition. Condition two, which is, uh, Condition 2 says, condition 2, let's do it this way, uh, find next, uh, find next text field is empty. That is the condition. Oop, condition, I'm sorry. Condition. Um, and so there is no variable, and or I can say I can say variable equals uh, empty string, empty string. Another way of saying it is uh, um, it is um, empty. Then let's do case two. For case two. 
it's different. For case two, we are saying condition number two, find next text field is not empty. Is not empty. Okay, what what's in there? We, which which variable is there? And then uh, variable uh, variable two. Okay, let's say variable two. Uh, let's say I don't know uh, Portnov or just one letter. Okay, let's make it just one letter Q, for example. And you make sure that the, um, that uh, button is enabled now. Coming back to the definition, guys. Coming back to the definition. A set of conditions and or variables. Why do we need conditions and variables? Because we have to come to the point where we say test case failed or test case uh, passed. So, set of conditions and variables or variables under which tester will determine if requirement upon an application is satisfied. Requirement upon an application is satisfied. Let's take a look what we are saying about test case here in our um, forum discussion. Uh, our forum discussions are pretty much like you talk to your spouse. Okay, so she talks and you listen. And that, that is our discussion here. And it says, definition, set of conditions and or variables under which tester will determine if requirement upon an application is satisfied. And then we are saying test case is derived from requirement. No requirement, no test case. It might fail or pass in just one place. We mentioned that. The smallest possible action in software testing. Why is it the smallest possible action? Because it can fail or pass in just one place. There is nothing smaller than one in software testing. Uh, the group of test cases is called the test suite. Okay. The lowest possible level document in software testing. Yeah, because it cannot be smaller than that. So, guys, that is what we learn about um, test case. And I just I specifically want you to understand why that step-by-step -step instruction on how software feature should be tested, it is dead wrong. Software feature might need hundreds of test cases. Software feature cannot be tested with one test case. Feature means so many things are involved, it makes it a feature. Okay? So, it's, it is provocative. It says instruction. Yeah, you know, it is kind of instruction. Do this, do that. Yeah, there is some instructions there. Step by step, and it sounds like, what's wrong with step by step? Uh, everything is wrong with step by step, because it doesn't have to be step by step. Very often, there is no step by step. Okay? So, um, unless the sequence of steps makes the difference. It happens as well. It happens. Okay, let me see. Okay. Okay, keep going. Uh, let's move to the second question. What is included into the test case at the time of planning? Um, the key to answering that question is here. It says, at the time of planning. Because if you look at test case, you, you ask yourself, what's inside of the test case? What is inside? Okay, let's remove this. What's inside? Inside you have ID, some number. Then you have description. Uh, sometimes description is called purpose whatever, or title. So, then you have, um, we don't like the word steps, we call it instruction. Uh, the only reason we say instruction, because steps might be confused with bug report. So, that is what we want to eliminate. Instruction. And uh, then we have uh, actual result. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Expected expected result and that is where you stop at the time of planning because you don't know what's going to be there uh, when it uh, comes to execution though 
um, besides the um, expected, we have actual, and we have um, pass fail. So pass fail is a derivative from uh, actual and expected. So if they are the same, so we say pass. If they are different, we say fail. And um, okay, we say fail. Expected result, actual result, sure. And um, that is overall structure of the test case. Overall structure. And um, but the question is at the time of planning. At the time of planning, we stop right here. ID, description, instruction, expected result. That's it. So let's see what we have here. What is included? Steps to reproduce. Guys, there are no steps to reproduce in, in test case. Steps to reproduce is uh, something, uh, uh, something um, you um, have in the bug report. It's a completely different type of document. Um, test case ID, good. Instruction on how to resolve the problem. There is no problem. You, you just plan for it. You don't, you don't have any problem to resolve. Pass fail indication, not at the time of planning. There is no pass fail indication at the time of planning. An instruction on how to get from application base state to a verifiable application output or expected result. That, should, that one should be 100%. That is the instruction. That is what we put in that... Uh, in that field, instruction. What you do to get to that place where you where you see the verifiable result. Some people call it steps, we call it instruction, but that, that is what, what's in there. Uh, application base state is the state when you just run your application. You have notepad, you just run it. Okay, start, run. Okay, here is here is the base state, application base state for Notepad, you just run it and you do nothing. How you move from here to the place where you say, okay, failed or passed. A report the bug after discussing with your manager, it is irrelevant. Expected result, okay, now we have 100%, good. Um, uh, short description. Short description. Short description, again, uh, is... Uh, uh, short description again is um, something you find in uh, bug report. Guys, look what you do. 87%. What, what do you mean short description? In test case, short description? There is no short description. Actual result. 18% saying actual result. At least it is uh, consistent with pass fail. So pass fail and actual result, because normally we have different numbers here in pass, fail, and actual. Should be the same, but again, should be zero, actually. Because at the time of planning, there is no actual result, and there is no pass, fail, and um, overall, there is no short description, and there is no steps to reproduce. Okay, what are the most common documents written by testers? Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, bug reports are very common. Mm. Steps to reproduce is not a, rep a document. Step to reproduce is a field in uh, in the bug report. You you cannot call it a document, guys. You you have to un you have to see the difference. Okay. Uh, test cases. Test cases are documents, and test cases are written by testers, and uh, I would rather see 100% there. Uh, test matrices. Absolutely, we do test matrices if it comes to that. Traceability matrices. Um, when you um, watch the video, uh, let me show you, it's here, um, that one. Test documentation by Jana Murza. So Jana is a brilliant... Um, teacher and she talks about test documentation and that is something you you would never see anywhere in the world I mean it, it is an absolute unique piece um, videotaped in in our classroom at night 
but um, so coming wait a second coming back oh no I'm, I'm sorry um, so and she talks about uh, traceability matrices and how testers are involved so you uh, keep track of requirements being implemented so if something is not implemented you don't have to test it so it's very important to understand uh, uh, we are testing then uh, we have uh, test plans um, test plans is something testers do and when when the question says written by testers it doesn't say junior testers or mid-level testers or senior testers or test management uh, testers means all of us in QA department or in software testing department um, so I would say uh, we, we do test uh, test plans a lot and um, even if you are at very uh, very low level in that uh, you know pyramid um, they will still uh, ask you to do something for for the test plan could be a couple of sentences or a couple of paragraphs um, so everybody participates but again as a group so we, we develop test plans uh, end to end tests end to end test is a system test um, if you think about um, if you think about use case which is a requirement so use case describes how user communicates with uh, with the future software to to resolve certain tasks let's say if I'm if, if the software is for banking and um, so how user how bank teller will open checking account okay what happens what kind of communication happens between uh, user and the system and if that use case is given to you as a tester and the question is okay is that business requirement implemented properly and then you run it and it becomes end-to-end -end test end-to-end -end test is a system level test you do not know and you do not care which modules are involved which units are involved what's behind it's like you you test drive a car when you test drive a car you don't have to know anything about that car you just get into the car and you have your driver's license and you have a couple of pedals and you have steering wheel and that's it and now you can drive a car if you if you can drive it overall so and that is how you what system testing is about um, so end-to-end -end test is something we do a lot obviously at certain point normally system level testing is the right type of testing when the system is pretty much ready to go at the very late stages of development when everything is in place otherwise you cannot really do much in at system level requirements we do not write requirements guys we suggest uh, on improvements uh, uh, enhancements uh, but, but we, we do not write requirements we reflect on them yes we, we can criticize requirements we can kind of say something about it but we, we do not uh, do requirements ourselves use cases and use cases are requirements guys use cases are requirements use case um, is developed by a business analyst and it describes the uh, future systems the communication between a user and the system so it is a requirement it's a business level requirement so testers do not do use cases believe it or not good um, there is a question here expected result for writing bugs expected result to judge if test case failed or passed why do we need expected result because we have someone who executes your test case should know if, if it passed or failed that is why we need expected result if it fails then we write a bug report definitely it's our job which documents would you refer to when creating test cases ah. imagine guys you come to fine dining restaurant lunchtime okay and it's full of brilliant foods and you come after fasting for god knows 40 days like jesus okay you go to desert and you eat nothing just water for 40 days and then you come back to people to promised land which is land of plenty okay and then they ask you what well, in that fine dining restaurant they ask you hi jesus what do you like today and you say give me the entire menu you know what i'm i just came from fasting that is um, how testers um, 
look at uh, requirements, guys. Requ you are f you are always hungry for more documentation. Whatever piece of documentation they give you, you want it. I mean, there are some exceptions, obviously, but uh, if it is related to technical or business aspect of how that software is going to work, uh, you want it because you will extract certain test cases or maybe test suites or maybe some test plan ideas out of that for sure. I mean, guaranteed. Now, let's take a look. Let's see what we have here. Uh, all business and technical documentation available. Somehow we have less than 70 percent. Guys, we, you, you do have all business and technical documentation available. You, you do want it. Even if you don't use it, you still want it. You want to decide what to use and what not to use, but you, you should have it. Okay. Uh, the next one says, we will rely primarily on my product knowledge. Uh, product knowledge is uh, is not about requirements. I, I mean, definitely product knowledge helps you to understand better certain things. It helps you to do faster certain things. But test cases are function of requirements. No requirement, no test case. So how would you write test cases with no requirements? You might say, yeah, in, you know, but I know that software, I can come up with some requirements. Well, it, it, still, it is not exactly like having any requirements. Obviously, sometimes, guys, all you have, you have in, uh, you know, available is your common sense and your intuition and your product knowledge. It happens. But then you have to be uh, pretty much senior level, you know. And, yeah, definitely, startups hire primarily senior level people because they, they just do not have time to accommodate um, mid-level and uh, entry-level folks. They, they just need senior level people who know how to keep themselves busy. And um, my intuition, so no intuition, no product knowledge. It's not a good way to go. Uh, it is a last resort, actually. A product requirement document. We have uh, two. Uh, which looks similar. Product requirement document, PRD and BRD, business requirement document. Business requirement document is a, a description of the product, what it should do from the business standpoint. It doesn't tell you how it should be implemented. It just tells you what users are supposed to achieve using that. A product requirement document is answering the question how exactly it is going to be done. Okay, to achieve what the business requirement document wants users to be able to achieve, so what kind of product do we need? And uh, definitely product requirement document will give you lots of ideas on how to write test case, and business requirement document will give you a lot of ideas specifically for, maybe not for test cases, but for end-to-end -end tests. Uh, but there is one more document which is even closer to test cases, and that document is functional specification. Functional specification, and you like it, I see, like 87%. Um, so functional specification is a feature description, basically, a feature by feature, function by function. It goes and uh, describes in uh, all the possible de detail uh, how that uh, feature is working. I mean, definitely some documentation is written more uh, detailed, some documentation is written with no detail, some documentation is never written. Uh, it happens. And uh, I would say, as time goes on, so we have um, less and less uh, <laughs> solid documentation to use. That is the world in which we live. But you have to, you have to expect that, guys. You, you, you cannot say, like one of my students, she called from internship and she said, Michael, it's a, it's a disaster. They have no documentation. Come on, it's a common thing. What are you complaining about? It's normal. Um, it's like uh, on a war, you know? War is very different from peace, you know? Um, so um, everything can happen. Functional specification, emails from customers. Emails from customers is something which eventually might, might be forwarded to you. And if there is something cool in it, uh, like, someone tried to do something and uh, face certain problems, you definitely want to keep it and you definitely want to cover that specific situation either with test cases or maybe end-to-end -end tests, depends what, what actually happened. 
um, will develop the product first and then write requirements. Uh, there is no single person who supports that out of, let's see how many I will refresh, out of 16. Okay, out of 16 people, nobody supports we develop first. I just want you to know that um, sometimes that is the case, means, let's say you come to the company and they have three, four months to either get more money or just ter terminate the company. And at that specific point, they have no requirements, no, no, they don't care about graphic user interface, they don't care about lots of things, they just want to survive within the next three months. And then, finally, they got the money, and they have money for another year, maybe year and a half of operations. And they are saying, look, we are not already, we are not the company which is in the survival mode. We have to operate differently. We have to be more solid in what we are doing. So we didn't have any requirements, which was kind of justified by the situation. But for the future, we cannot do that anymore. We need requirements. So, uh, so guys, go look at the product, look at this, look at that, whatever you use. Write the requirements, which are currently implemented. Write them down. Why we need them now? Because we will use them in the future. Um, if it happens to you, so first of all, do not uh, put it in your resume like you developed requirements. Um, I would say it might cause certain confusion because uh, most of the people would think you uh, you, you helped a business analyst or it, it kind of diluted your uh, QA uh, work. So don't say that. I just want you to understand that sometimes we have to write requirements backward, okay? Requirements against uh, implementation of the requirements. You look at that implementation and you write the requirements. It might happen. Okay, if you work in, in uh, early stage startups. Uh, manuals and help. Uh, brilliant, guys. If you have manuals and help, uh, those are not explaining people what to do uh, in negative kind of situations. They tell them exactly the positive. They say, that is what to do if you want to achieve certain things. So, it gives you lots of uh, ideas for positive test cases. Positive. And negative is your creativity. So, um, okay. Use cases. Um, use cases are business requirements. You definitely want use cases. Test design. Test design uh, is not what you want for test cases. Test design is the document which allows you to um, cover all the important functionalities in your product. If test design is not good, then there might be some functionality not tested properly. So test design is not, is not what uh, helps you to create test cases. Test design helps you uh, not to um, forget about certain test cases to be written. Okay. Um, Third-party publications, books published by independent authors. Guys, you can't imagine how helpful it could be. In today's world, it's very difficult to find an application uh, where each and every feature is a unique feature. You cannot find it anywhere. Um, uniqueness normally comes from technology behind the interface, or uniqueness comes from how those features are combined and what they allow people to do, but uh, let's say shopping cart is everywhere, uh, password security is everywhere, login and password and uh, user account and sending emails and social networking features and so many things are everywhere. Now, if your product does not have uh, exact uh, description or exact definition of how it works, take a book which talks about similar product and read it there. there. There is always a book about something which, which is a pretty good match to what you are testing. Okay. Let's keep moving. Uh, we have lots of questions left. Login password dialog. Okay, let's skip it. What is the difference between test case and test plan? Uh, no difference. Just one person says no difference. Big, big difference because 
uh, test case is the smallest possible document and test plan is the most comprehensive document in software testing. So then it says test plan needs to be approved by QA manager. Uh, yes and no. Uh, test cases are integral part of test plan. No. No, no, no. Test plan is a philosophical document. It is a strategic document. And test cases are the, the least strategic and least philosophical. So test cases cannot be a part of test plan. Um, test cases are written by testers. Um, test plan by QA manager. Mm, not good. Uh, test cases are written by many people, including testers and maybe test ma QA manager as well. Test plan is not written by QA manager for sure. It is written by uh, pretty much the entire team. I mean, most of it could be written by QA manager and senior people and uh, QA leads, but um, it is not exactly like uh, test plan is written by QA manager. Um, test cases are about finding bugs. Test plan is about preventing them. Mm, makes no sense. Test cases are about meeting requirements. It is true. We just discussed that. Test cases are about requirements. Test plan about, is about test strategy, schedule, resources. Um, what do we have here on test plan? It says documents that describes now four, four keywords to remember. Objectives, scope, approach, and focus of software testing uh, effort. Objectives, scope, approach, and focus. That, that is what it is. So when we come back to the um, uh, interview, uh, to the um, quiz, so most of you are on the right side of the barricade. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, describe risk analysis. Dis analysis of how customers will react on software problem. Assessing risk of not hiring enough testers. Uh, guys, you, you have to understand, we live in the world of limited resources. We never have enough time, we never have enough money, we never have enough people, we never have enough expertise. Whatever we do, we never have enough of everything. So that is why, why we deal with risks, risks of not having enough of this and not having enough of that. That is why we do risk analysis to do the, the best of what we can do with the resources we have. So risk analysis is something which everybody does. It doesn't matter what kind of work you do. For example, when it says analysis of how customers will react on certain problems, that it might make sense to some people. Maybe they are marketing people, maybe they are public relations people, I don't know. To them it might be very valid risk to analyze. Um, assessing the risk of not hiring enough testers for the project might be a very reasonable risk analysis for project manager, manager for example. Or people who give, the, give the money for the project say, okay, what if we do not give enough money? And then the whole thing dies. Uh, marketing meeting with new features, uh, meeting where new features are discussed. No, not really. That, that is not exactly risk analysis. Actions taken to avoid things, that is the right definition. Actions taken to avoid things that might negatively impact the scope, quality, timeliness, or cost of a project. That is risk analysis. Uh, shared responsibility among everyone involved in the project. It is shared responsibility of everyone involved in the project. And if we look at that uh, cheat sheet, yeah, it says, Risk analysis means the action take, actions taken to avoid things going wrong on software development project that might negatively impact scope, quality, timeliness, or cost of a project. This is, of course, a shared responsibility among everyone involved in the project. Definitely someone, however, there needs to be a backstop here person. Someone who says, okay, we stop right here. Done. Okay. Move. Uh, there, there, there should be someone responsible for bigger thing, but it is a responsibility of everybody on the project. It is a shared responsibility. Business analyst responsibility? No, not business analyst. What is test matrix? 
What is test matrix? Um, test matrix, matrix of tests. <laughs> Not really. Uh, risk analysis methodology, format for specifying systems requirement. That is use case. Uh, data collection mechanism. It is true. It is a data collection mechanism. Um, depth collection mechanism. No, not really. Spreadsheet for organizing and presenting test data. Um, so it is normally looking like a spreadsheet, um, but uh, it is not about test data. See, test data is something we need to execute the test. Let's say. Uh, if we test uh, login and password, um, so we need an account to be created. Otherwise, we, we, we do not have valid login and valid password to, to log into. So that is test data. If we, uh, the push, uh, for example, if we import or export databases, so then we need database to export, and that is test data. Then we need uh, files to import, and that is uh, test data. If you have to um, upload videos to YouTube, when you test YouTube, you, you need videos, and they are test data. So, uh, uh, matri test matrices are not about test data. And if you look at our definition here, it says, uh, let me show you, yeah, it says, data collection mechanism. It provides a structure, let's say spreadsheet, for testing the effect of combining two or more variables, circumstances, types of hardware, or events. Row and column headings identify the test condition. For example, you have uh, horizontally, you have different browsers we use. So let's say Microsoft Internet Explorer uh, 10, uh, Firefox, whatever, uh, three latest versions of Firefox, then we have two latest versions of Chrome, then we have Safari, and here is the list of browsers. And then, vertically, on the left-hand side, we have operating systems. We are saying, okay, what do we have? We have um, Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows XP, then we have uh, uh, Macintosh uh, OS uh, 10, then we have Android, and then we have iOS, certain version. Here are the platforms. So then we have a matrix. And in the cells of the matrix, you can say, you can put something like tested or put nothing or say yes or no or pass or fail, whatever you want to say. But um, the important thing here is structure for testing the effect of combining two or more factors. Effect of combining. So that matrix that spreadsheet uh, should give you the structure for combining the effect of combine uh, for seeing the effect of combining different uh, variables. Th that is the idea of uh, test matrix. It is nothing but small spreadsheet. Um, we have a question here uh, in Skype. It says, "What is the difference between test design and test plan?" Test design is about test coverage. A test plan is, is a battle plan. Test plan is about schedules, it's about uh, goals, it's about uh, focus of software testing. And uh, test coverage is not, uh, test coverage is a limited thing, which is a functionality stuff. But uh, that is test design. But then what about load testing? What about volume testing? What about uh, endurance testing. We have many, many different things which will not get into the test design. So test design might be a part of test plan, but test test plan is is all inclusive. I mean, with the exception of test cases, it's it's a much bigger document. It's not about test coverage. It's about the whole thing. Um, what is test plan? Document that describes objectives, scope, approach, and focus of software testing effort. Ninety-three percent good. Good. Um, what does test plan include? Uh huh. No, guys, there are going to be no steps to reproduce. Uh, it it well might be personnel allocation. So who does what? Absolutely. There are no expected results in test plan. 
priorities and focus, absolutely. Feedback from company management does not belong there. Risk analysis might be, well, might be. Um, test scenarios, use cases, appraisal. Yeah, so we are pretty good. So personnel allocation, good. Testing priorities and focus, good. Uh, risk analysis, good. So now, guys, we are coming back to the question we skipped for a while, and that is uh, login and password. Test cases. Okay, let's take the first one, for example. Uh, and I will move it to Notepad so you can better see what it says. Test case, login, password. Requirements. Okay, requirements. Um, number one. Oh, I'm sorry. Number one. Login should be minimum two, maximum 30, 32 characters, numbers, letters, and blah, 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 allowed. Uh, it is not a requirement. I mean, it's not one requirement. I mean, it is uh, lots of requirements. Under number one, you have lots of requirements. Password should be minimum two, maximum three numbers only. Uh, hidden by bullets, copy-paste function. Listen, uh, it is not a requirement, really. I mean, uh, that uh, hidden by bullets is uh, um, one requirement. Uh, copy paste, copy paste uh, function, not copy paste by the way, not copy paste, just copy. Copy function disabled, uh, copy disabled, not just copy. Um, Number five, um, cut function disabled on uh, password. Copy function disabled on password. Your test cases are bad in terms of not being instrumental in developing test cases. You are not going to come with good test cases out of that. Um, well, well, we'll see. Um, so, what are the test cases? We are saying positive. Okay, let's see. Positive. Zero, one. Okay. Enter valid login, valid password. Expecting enabled login button to login. Okay, so as I promised, there is no test case here. So a test case starts with ID. Okay, then it says, what is the purpose? What is the purpose? It's not enter. There is nothing to enter. The question is, what are you trying to test? Why you do the test case? So then you are saying valid uh, login and valid password. So that is what that is why you do that. And then you say valid enter valid login. There is no there is no instruction here. Instruction is about variables. So before you do all that you should say test data. Test data. And you say uh, create an account with, let's say, Mikhail as a login. As a login and uh, Portnov as a password. Okay. Then now you have a chance to provide instruction. Okay, so then you are saying Mikhail. You don't even need the word enter. You say Mikhail and port nov is, is your input. Okay. And the expected result 
here would be expected result would be logged in. And actual result, you have no idea what it would be. And what the, the very fact you are saying pass tells me you, you, you don't know what's testing about. You cannot say pass to actual. There is no test case to execute. Pass is possible only when you execute test case. If you project test case and you say pass, you cannot be employed. You just do not understand the meaning of testing. The word pass cannot be in that place. Okay? That, that is what, what happens here. And as I told you, if you don't have requirements, guys, you, you do not have test cases. B poor requirements, poor test cases. Now we have negative. Okay. Uh, I don't know why it should, the numbers should change, but let's say two, okay, three. Let's see what we have there. Four. Enter valid login. Forget about them. What are you testing? Uh, valid, okay, valid login, invalid password, invalid password, that is what we test, okay, good, uh, then what, what else, um, oop. enter, um, okay, so what do we type in, we type Mikhail, and instead of port now, we will say port no W. Okay, just one letter. We deviate in just one character. Unless you specify exactly the string to type in, it means everybody who runs the test case will provide his own data. Means you never have same test case executed in identical way ever. Means it's not a test case. It is something which, which is not appropriate, not acceptable. Has no room, you know, in, in software testing. Then, what do we expect? We expect uh, rejected. Or let's say login rejected, okay. Login rejected, that, that is what we expect. It's not about button, you know. It's not about anything like that. Zero three. Uh, enter valid login invalid password. We just did that. Expected invalid login valid. Okay. It is something we just did. Um, number three. Um, why in the world I have to, what is invalid login? Invalid login is something which is not even login. Well, where does it come from? What does it mean invalid login? What is that? And listen, you have requirements here. You have requirements and you have no single test case which, uh, which uh, results from your requirements. You do not have test case which will uh, see if uh, uh, cut function is available or copy function is available. Uh, you do not have test case to make sure it is hidden. You do not have test case to make sure it is two characters and 32 characters. It cannot be one, it cannot be 33. It numbers, letters, a minus sign or uh, whatever other, you know, things. You have no single test case resulting from your requirements. So in that specific situation, if you start writing your requirements and then you come with test cases like that, it, it means you're never going to get a job unless you talk to someone who has no idea what software testing is about. You cannot afford to write test cases which have nothing to do with the requirement. Why, why in the world you come with requirements? What is the reason to do requirements in, if then you, you ignore it completely and, you know, what, what, what is that? Um, let me see what we have on the forum here. Login password, okay. Here is login password. 
And then we have requirements. We say valid login, valid password combination lets user in. Okay. Any other combination will be rejected. Good. Password is case insensitive. Login is case insensitive. Login field accepts 2023 characters. Password field accepts 2023 characters. Submit button is disabled unless both fields have data. Look, we have lots of requirements here. But then we have two accounts, Mikhail Portnov and Obama Barack. And then we have test cases. And test cases are coming out of requirements and it is given to you. You don't have to invent anything. All, all it takes is to spend some time and learn it. And it's, it is your choice. You might say, okay, we will, we will uh, learn it and get a job or we forget about this stuff and then I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I mean, why in the world you would not learn something which is critically important for you to succeed? Okay. Um, just a second, guys. Uh, Sean is saying he got lost from the group. Just a second. Okay. Yes, Sean is there. Um, uh, would anybody um, paste the um, link to the webinar to the group so Sean can see it? Okay. Okay, good. So, um, Sean actually came like a couple of minutes before we finish the class, but he will see the um, recording. And someone told me he got a job already. Uh, well, I don't know. Um, so, guys, uh, I think we are we are okay for today. We've done some um, important work, and uh, I hope you will do the next one um, better. Um, and um, so, I'm, I'm pretty much done for today. So, any questions so far? Can I upload last videos to our page? I did. Uh, let me show you. Uh, last videos are, oh, I'm sorry. Last videos are here. Um, session 12, right here, and session 13, both are here. They both are here, and then uh, you can uh, access them from the very top. So it says testing one, testing two, so they, they are there. Okay, and uh, so if I'm late with something, just write me in Skype and I will I will put it. Sometimes I I'm getting late on the, on that. So no more questions. Um, okay, guys, back to work. And uh, within next couple of weeks, I believe we're going to get at least a few people working. And if you don't have your resume done yet, let me know. And I mean, just send me your resume and I will do the. Uh, job market version. So thank you very much and um, let me see someone is writing to me. Okay, thank you very much and uh, I'll talk to you uh, tomorrow.